Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. Hope you guys are doing good today. So. A lot of drama has gone on over the weekend with the SWV and Escape reality TV show, child. I was shocked about last night's episode. It was a trip. So not only are we dealing with the, you know, storyline with Tamika, <laughs> a.k.a. my twin. It's so weird to watch her on television because literally I see my face. For coming. Thank you so much. Don't we look alike? We look alike. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Thank you, Miss Tamika. I hey, appreciate you, you look, for coming. Doesn't she look beautiful? Thank you. Thank you so much. Snatched to the gods. Yes. They was, you know we got to do it big in Atlanta, honey. We got to do it big. Well, I'm so glad you're here. I know. But um, it was very interesting to watch her dynamic with her mother screaming that she's the fifth member. I'm like, what in the damn Destiny's Child is going on here? All these extra members that need to get the hell up on? Like, come on now, Mom. You're not the fifth member. You're the mother. And you're the mother to two daughters. Like, that whole scene was sad, okay? I am the fifth member. When your daddy walks out on me and he didn't care whether we swim or sink. I am the fifth member. I'm that silent member that keep you and Tasha together. But now, that aside... I'm trying to figure out what in the world is going on with Candy, Tiny, okay, and SWV. They were not here for that. For that whole little co-headlining payment situation, it got very, very messy, okay? We all know after weeks of back and forth with Latasha Scott, they agreed to this collaboration, but then a bunch of new tension arose when Candy... And Tiny Honey started asking who would get top billing. Okay. And so I'm going to go ahead and play you guys this video. Watch everybody's face, including Latasha's face, is priceless. Y'all go ahead and check this out, honey. Last tour we did, we were headlining our own tour. So, how is this going to go when it comes to billing? I think it needs to be co headlining. That's, that avoids any. Feelings, issues, I, I just think it needs to be. You have two legendary R&B groups that should be co-headlining to keep it moving. Well, and it's collaborative. See, I mean, I hear what you're saying, but at the same time, like our group, we still feel like we want to still have top billing on our tour. What the hell is this? On your tour? On your I mean, tour? any tours that we're on. We on pass. <laughs> This one, this show, we should co-headline. Okay. Girl, do you know who you're talking to? This is SWV. We've sold how many records compared to your seven million? Girl, bye. It's really a celebration. It's not a, It's not about egos. It's not about my tour, your tour. It's a celebration of all of us together. Y'all don't want to co-headline? I mean, that wasn't really what we were thinking about doing before. And and, I, and this is not having anything to do with you guys personally. Don't get no, me no, wrong. No, no, it's no, no disrespect ahead. to y'all. We love y'all. We love y'all music and we respect y'all. You know what I mean? But realistically, we have been headlining our shows. Since you came back. Right. As a group. Yeah. Right. It's the Vega has major hits. But do they have the fan base or the following that we have? No. People watch me, Candy, on TV doing our thing. Then they find out, oh, these girls sing. So that fan base is millions and millions and millions of followers more. That's fine. And what I'm saying is this is one night. When y'all do your tour, you can headline all day. But for this one night, we need to co-headline. All right, so you guys just watched that clip. It's gone viral all over social media. Everyone is weighing in. And Tamika and Candy are also talking as well. So Tamika took to Twitter and she said the following. Of course, their manager thinks we should co-headline. Then somebody added Candy. They said, Candy, you tried it. Always team SWV. Then they showed a video of Coco with her plaques. So then Candy says, we may have not been headliners in the 90s, 
but we have been for the past six years since we've reunited. Respectfully, they've opened up for us multiple times already. And then if that's not crazy enough, Coco also posted, like, you know, clips showing that Escape is not always a headliner. So they had showed a screenshot called Nashville R&B Music Experience with Monica and friends. The only person whose name was on that roster was Monica. Everybody else, including Escape, was merely friends. Okay, they were showing that as well. Then Coco went on to post, Lay Humble LLC, SWV monthly listeners, over 3 million. Escape monthly listeners, 800,000. Basically saying that there's a big difference between the two groups. And then Lily came back and she basically told them all to tread lightly. So Lily wants all the smoke. I'm telling you, Lily's a fighter. Lily's been through hell and back. I, you know, her story is just amazing and touching to me. I love Lily. And she follows me, strangely enough. I just found that out one day. She commented on my page. I'm like, Lily knows who the hell I am? Oh, my God. I, like, fanned out and shit. But, yeah, so I totally fanned out. I mean, I'm a huge fan of these ladies, and it's crazy to me. It's like my real-life aunties are fighting. And you guys know I've met Tamika Tiny. I've met Candy. I've been, you know, in their green room with them in New Orleans. I've been at Rashida's birthday party. You know, and I like all of these ladies. You know what I'm saying? I love Taj. I haven't met Taj yet, but I love her energy. She's just very pro-woman and bringing people together, and she's like the glue. Lily's story is just amazing. I had no idea that she was a teen mom, you know, while she was in SWV, you know, traveling and singing and having a, a baby at home and just everything she's been through losing it all and rebuilding. So all of these women are boss chicks. Like I am, when I tell you I'm genuine fans of all of these women, like even to watch Tamika and Latasha fighting the way they're fighting, it's like heartbreaking because, you know, I want to remember them as escape, those girls that were on my wall and people like, oh, that's your twin when they would come to my room. I want to remember them as SWV the women that were on my wall that everybody loved. You know, like even my kids know SWV songs because on the weekend when I'm cleaning, best believe week is going to come on, just kicking is going to come on. So, child, I am not here for these beautiful women going back and forth. I was just like, ah, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, I can't believe they're beefing right now. This is crazy. So then after that, Lily got involved and she says, this here internet got niggas acting real gangster, LOL. Keep the same energy, boo-boo chicken. Now, you know Lily. She's from the Bronx, honey, okay? Lily don't play that shit. She done been through a lot of hard times and you are not fucking up her bag. Lily says she done been homeless. She done had to sleep at the damn Yankee Stadium. Bitch, she will not be back under that bridge in the name of Jesus. Y'all will not mess up her brand or mess up her bag, Okay. And then somebody tried to confront Lily and they said, let me make this clear. This is not how you do business. You do not get mad and walk out the room because somebody threw an offer out there. State your position. You don't later get to go on social media and threaten people or say let the managers handle it. Lily said, who the hell threatened anybody? I'm from NYC. You'd know a threat when you hear one. I'm not on that type of time. Stop it. And I don't think she was threatening anybody. You got a lot of fake-ass Karens who are sensitive about everything. Lily's keeping it real. So then Tamika says, we're not talking about record sales. We're talking about ticket sales. So that was in response to the fan who had posted Coco holding the awards and the record sales. Then Tamika also says, let's be clear. We love SWV as much as you all do, but business is business. Then to, then somebody else says, Tamika, they say, we know and you know we fuck with you heavy, tiny, but nah, y'all should definitely co-headline. Tiny then says, so you want us to take a pay cut and give them a raise? I don't care what the flyer said, but that billing has to add up. So then somebody else says, it's one show. I don't understand the issue with co-headlining. Like both groups are iconic, but y'all really try to play with SWV. Everybody get paid equally, then you go on about y'all's business. Tiny replies back and she says, nah, cause we don't make the same money on no show. The fee is worlds apart, respectfully. So she's basically hinting at and saying that SWV, they're not getting paid what Escape gets paid. So Escape ain't trying to take no pay cut, period.
Then she goes on to say, I ain't never been a hater, but I've always been about business. And somebody else says, SWV has sold three times the records of Escape. So if anything, Escape should be opening for them. The mere fact that all they want is a co-headline is generous. They've been doing 50 shows a year and Escape can barely get out the dressing room. Humble yourselves accordingly. Ooh, the fans are shady, honey. They are not here for this back and forth. Then somebody else says, on what planet would escape headline over SWV? Candy and Tiny are full of shit. Someone else says, laugh my effing ass off. Candy and Tiny has lost their damn mind. After that, Taj and Coco go live and they start talking about the drama. So I want y'all to go ahead and check this out. They only showed me saying two albums went platinum. Singles went platinum, international. There's a lot of stuff exactly. that we can claim. But we would never bring that up on them. Like when we when we were called, we didn't say, "Well, we'll do it because we got this and we want." No, we were mm -hmm. happy and excited to be doing something with Escape. We just thought that was so dope, especially since when we were younger in the, in the '90s, we didn't get a lot of chances to do a lot of stuff together. So on this time, as we're older and more mature and ready, exactly. I was looking for a great exactly. old time. I wanted to have yeah, all and <laughs> yeah. And the fact that they said you don't have the fan base, like, what are they talking about? You have the fan base, like, all about the music. Yeah, they may have a fan base based off of Candy and Tiny's reality shows. Even Tiny admit that because when she said, like, y'all can say, I'm not sure people knew they were from Escape. They know you guys are SWB. You're from SWB. So the fact that they made that claim that you don't have as big of a fan base that they have, like, y'all sold out uh, Wembley Arena. In London. So, <laughs> I, 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 I suppose <laughs> so, but yeah. Uh, that's I, I, they don't want me to oh, uh, 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 Let's take a break. Folks got to remember, uh, we're okay. in New York from the heart. We try to be adults, we try to be grown, but it's only but so much a person can yeah, take y'all shoes is a way to, shorter than mine. To hold it down, but it's like, all right, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I take you too much. When I was watching that scene, I kept rewinding the faces, the looks, because I was dying. Everybody's like, let it play. So I'm going, wait, wait, look I'm at this like, right yeah, here. I have one eye closed, one open. I said, damn, the other lady is coming out. <laughs> oh, and you were talking about your bipolar medication. I said, oh, Lord, I, I don't think she's I had to have your shit up. There's Dan when you need him. <laughs> Headliner situation, yeah. and then we get there, it was just totally changed, yeah. and I couldn't go home because we had already signed the contracts. <laughs> right. We were stuck. Right. We, were stuck. <laughs> we had so to finish. Where did this come from? <laughs> this is new. And it just changed the whole dynamic of the whole groove. It's like, dang, this everything. is dumb. <laughs> It sucks though, cause we were really cool, and now it's just like, Ugh. yeah. And now it just feels different. Everything feels different. All the clips, and, you know, people are taking yeah. advantage of the clips here and clips there. And of course, you're gonna feel some type of right. way when you see clips and somebody is still saying something smart about you. I don't think we've ever done anything where we yeah, said anything no, right about come them. On that. We came on a humble, yeah. open heart. We was ready to just make history because it's never been done before. So to get there and it's somebody put us down done. because they have millions of followers on social media, I was just like, wow, that's weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I said. It just changed the dynamic yeah. and it made it real uncomfortable. It was, it was like, why are we here? Why are we here? Right. We, we, exactly. we could have been home. We living in, in a tiny little spare apartment Working every day on the road, not seeing our family, to, to be told that we're not good enough to stand up. Wow, that was me, honey. Honey, oh yeah, that was that on that. Now next week it gets even better. We go in the rehearsal, and so then after they go live. 
Somebody says to Candy and they say this, you always have an excuse for coming in second place. The sales and the streaming numbers don't lie. People went to that escape tour because they figured it would be the last time seeing four members on stage. And it looks like they were right. Candy replies and she says this, I never said they didn't sell more records, but the concert is about who can sell more tickets. Be upset if you want. But we've done other shows since the tour and promoters still had SWV go on before us. It is what it is. Then Candy goes on to her show called Speak On It and she addresses the situation. It's been more than two, let's say that, in more recent years, I guess in the last two years or something, there were other shows that was like festivals or whatever where we still were the headlining act of, and they still went on before us. Even if you wanna say it was like a festival with a whole bunch of people, we still went on at the end of the night and they went on before or during the day, okay? To be clear, cause that was in the Vegas thing. That's how they, they came on at the daytime. We was on at the end of the night. So I say that to say it's not being cocky. It's when you have established yourself as a headlining act, you have to kind of like maintain that. So when you're dealing with these promoters, they can't think that they can lowball you the next time. You get what I'm saying? It wasn't about SWV. It's just about we got to maintain the fees that we get. Another example, I don't want to speak on exactly what their fee is, but at the time, our fee was three to four times what their fee is. So why would we agree to split our fee and split in half? Then that means we are lowering what we get just so that you they can say they felt comfortable. You get what I'm saying? Well, she was okay with. It uh, sounds like she would have been fine with you guys getting paid. No, no, just so no. I guess I heard them say on there something about oh, oh, so y'all don't want to split equal or something. Oh. Uh, it was about multiple things. I love SWV. I think SWV is amazing. But even if you sold the most records back in the 90s, it's about who sells the most tickets in concerts today. Doing a little spring cleaning and came up on this little beauty here. I forgot, y'all. This right here. Let me see. Can I read this? It's the Great Escape Tour. We first came back. We sold out 28 cities. And then they added two more, which made it 30. So they gave us this um, plaque to remind us that we came back out and every arena sold out. New edition, right? We all love new edition. SWV has sold more records than new edition, y'all. But when have you ever seen them headline over new edition? Never. But you're not gonna tell me that I've been headlining with you opening for me for the last six years. How, oh, you know how they say, since you got, since you came back. That's what she wanted to say to me. Yeah, I don't care if y'all want to say that whatever they was doing when I wasn't there. When I came back, if that's how you want to put it, when I came back, Tiny there, yes, we help the group. We're still a part of Escape, and we help Escape get more visibility, hence, I guess, more ticket sales. But do they have the fan base or the following that we have? No. So that fan base it's millions and millions and millions of followers more. And that is not our fault. I don't know, you know, it's not us trying to pull rank. It is business. The bottom line is we have established ourselves as a headlining act. Okay, another thing she said, they do 50 shows a year. That means that you have oversaturated the market. A lot of promoters don't want to give you, you know, they don't want to make you the headlining act or they don't want to, pay you but so much because they feel like people have already seen you in the market okay that's another thing but back to my example to be clear just because you feel like you sold more records than someone and or if even if you did sell more records than someone in the 90s it doesn't mean you're going to sell more tickets to shows than them i don't even know has swv headlined anything in the last six years in the United States. I'm not trying to go overseas and I'm talking right here in the US of A. Anyway, I, I hate, I know business conversations can be uncomfortable. So after that video was posted on the shade room, here comes Tamar 
once again being messy. And Tamar says, imagine having the biggest ego for the most non-singing ass person in the entire music industry. Stream my new hit song, Hashtag Change, where I pay homage to the amazing SWV. So, Tamar, honey, you know, for somebody who says she's done with it, she ain't too, too done. For somebody who keeps singing, she's changed. I can't tell, sis. You're being very messy. But Tamar ain't lying, though. Candy's voice is not that strong. But Candy's a phenomenal writer and businesswoman. I will never take that from her. So now, if that's not crazy enough, honey, they also talked about the drama on The Breakfast Club. And Jason Lee also had his input. And Jason Lee says that Candy is a bully and basically a mean girl behind the scenes. So I want you guys to go ahead and listen to this Breakfast Club snippet. Check this out. Remember December 19th, because that's when Tamar had posted on her Instagram that she was almost beat up by some Real Housewives of Atlanta girls. Uh, and, you know, I didn't know who the girls were, so I called her and she told me it was Todd and Candy. Now, I don't know why they wanted to beat her up, but there was actually a photo that she had posted that I, uh, or a photo that I found online that I sent to her and I said, what is going on? And she said that she was accosted backstage by Candy and her husband. Well, that tea never got spilled until the other night when she went on uh, Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen and a fan called in and asked her a messy question and this is what happened. Forming somewhere, uh, there was a picture that was found online of a man who I think was dating Tamar at the time approaching another man, which looked like Todd if you zoom in. So I sent her the photo, I said, what happened? She said she had got off stage, he had come uh, up to her, Todd, and approached her and started to be real reckless. She didn't really get into much of the details mm -hmm. of what was going on, but she did feel like that, that you know, there was a physical altercation that could happen. Well, apparently after her man approached Todd and had a conversation, you know, she didn't really want to be messy and go online about it. But yeah, so now that it's out, uh, apparently Candy wanted the beef. Wow. I wonder if uh, like uh, all of these individuals weren't involved in reality TV, would they have so much drama and mess surrounding their lives? I wonder. Well, well, Candy, I, I think, you know, I, I let me first start by saying, because everybody's going to say, oh, you're taking black women. No, I love Candy in Escape. I loved her on the show when she had a storyline that made sense. When Phaedra was there and they had all the sex gate where they said they were in the dungeon or allegedly, you know, out doing threesomes and stuff. She had an interesting storyline. Since we've been critical about her not having a storyline and being a boring housewife and needed to be replaced, she's been a mean girl in these streets. She just recently was rude to one of my staff at the Grammys. Um, and I have I have a feeling, have, after talking to lots of people in her peer group, that mm -hmm. Candy is a bully. I think the Candy's a bully. Really? Absolutely. I've never got that impression of Candy. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. Not at all. Oh, Todd, they, they seem like cool people. Well, you, there's what you see on TV, reality, and what you see in real life. All right, so y'all just heard the snippet. I don't read to y'all all the drama, honey. It's a lot going on. Candy has been trending all day, nonstop for drama. So I leave the question up to you guys. Let me know your thoughts on this whole entire messy situation concerning Candy, uh, Escape, SWV, Tiny. It's a lot of mess, a lot of drama. Are y'all watching the new show? Do y'all like it? How do you guys feel about Tiny and Candy's response? Do you guys feel like, you know, they should do it for the fans and take a pay cut if that is the case? Or do you feel like, you know, they're over-exaggerating and it's their ego that's gotten the best of them? Um, let me know how you guys feel about this. Also, how do you guys feel about what Tamar and what Jason Lee had to say about Candy as well? Do you feel like Candy is showing her true colors? A lot of people are saying that on social media, that this is the real Candy and that Nene was right and Marla was right and all this other stuff. So I don't know. The whole situation is sad that it's gotten, you know, this crazy on social media between all of these ladies. But let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Please leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like and share the video. Also, make sure you still subscribe to this channel because YouTube, unfortunately, likes to unsubscribe people from the tea, honey, okay? So once again, you guys, thank you guys so much for the support. Thank you guys for just watching my channel, supporting my videos. It means a lot to me. Go ahead and leave a comment. I look forward to reading them down below. Talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.